بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today's uh, surah is Surah Al-Teen It's a Meccan surah by consensus of the scholars It was revealed after Surah Al-Buruj and before Surah Quraysh uh, The name of the surah, it only has one name according to the uh, scholars of Tafsir it only has the name of a teen. Teen is fig. And uh, regarding the issue of uh, reason of revelation, nothing has been recorded in this regard uh, amongst the scholars of uh, Tafsir. Uh, in the first set of verses, the first four verses, Allah Azza wa Jal uh, makes an oath uh, by different things. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونِ وَطُورِ السِّينِينَ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ Four oaths Allah Azza wa Jal gave. وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونِ وَطُورِ السِّينِينَ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ So Allah Azza wa Jal is drawing emphasis to what's coming after that. Allah Azza wa Jal when, when he, as we said before multiple times, that when Allah Azza wa Jal gives an oath, it is to draw emphasis and to highlight the importance of something and to give dignity to whatever comes after the oath or set of oaths he is making, subhanahu wa ta'ala. A teen, a teen is fig, zaytun is olive, the known uh, fruits, right? Uh, however, uh, scholars of Tafsir said uh, it is not intended for itself rather it is for the place that it is it commonly grows in and these two are very commonly growing in the Levant the greater Syria which is Bilad al-Sham right so Allah is given an oath here by the land and some scholars said, by the revelations that were sent down on that land. And that land is the land of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And then Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَطُورِ <clears throat> sinin And by Mount Sinai. Right? Again, this is another land over which revelations were uh, sent upon Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينَ And by this secure city, referring to Mecca. Again, another land. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was commissioned on that land, on Mecca. Al-Ameen secured. As Allah azza wa jal, وَمَنْ دَخَلْ سَيْدْ وَمَنْ دَخَلَهُ كَانَ آمِنًا And whoever enters it shall be Secure. So Mecca is the secure land or city Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by. So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by Bilad al-Sham, Mount Sinai, and Mecca, all of which are places, revelations were sent. And on these three out of five of Ulul Azmi min al Rusul, messengers of determination, Ibrahim, Nuh, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad. Three of these five are mentioned in these uh, oaths. So Allah Azza wa Jal is trying to attract the attention of anyone who hears or reads uh, uh, these uh, verses by giving uh, cryptic oaths to build up emphasis, to draw attention to what's coming up, right? And because the Face, at face value, there is no connection between fig, olives, Mount Sinai, and Mecca. So it makes a, a person interested to know what's coming up. And oaths are to emphasize. And the first verse after that, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Laqad. And in the Arabic language, the word Laqad is also used for emphasis. So notice. Five ways to draw emphasis to what? Now, the, the verse that comes after the set of oaths 
is the object of the oath, which is called in, in Arabic Jawabul Qasab. Right? So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing that indeed لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Indeed, we have uh, created man in the best of uh, stature. Allah Azza wa made mankind the best emotionally, intellectually, and physically. Mankind is the best in all aspects. It is enough honor for mankind that Allah Azza wa gave him a brain by which he can ponder. And that reflection will lead him to the greatness and might of the Creator and then get to know who created him and therefore worship him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing that he has created man in the best shape. In all aspects. As he says in the Quran in another verse, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمِ Indeed, we have, again, the word لَقَدْ, we have honored the son of Adam, mankind. Right? So Allah Azza wa Jal, in different verses throughout the Quran, repeats this emphasis that mankind were honored. They are a, a special set or category of the creation of Allah, uh, the, Almighty, the Almighty. And Allah Azza wa Jal, by uh, giving this oath, He's conveying that this category of creation is being taken care of by the Creator, by giving it and distinguishing it from others by giving it certain things none of other creations uh, possess. Then Allah Azza wa Jal says, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ Now the one reading or listening is still, is still interested to know what is going on. Allah is swearing that He has created man in the best form and then says, then we cause him to regress to the lowest of the low. What is going on? What does Allah Azza wa Jal want from us? What does He want to draw our attention to? Now, this reality or this fact is what Allah Azza wa Jal is trying to convey to human beings. Is that the nature upon which Allah Azza wa Jal created mankind is coherent with the nature of faith and that what goes up and what goes down is the soul and then when that when mankind deviate they will regress they will lose this lofty honorable noble status Allah Azza wa Jal granted them by deviating from faith. To the extent that mankind will regress to a, the lowest of the low is lowest than be, lower than beasts. Because Allah Azza wa said about beasts and other creation, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِحَهُمْ Everything, everything, Glorifies the praise of Allah Azza wa But you don't comprehend. Are you telling me that beasts glorify the praise of Allah? Yes, because Allah said that. So when mankind deviates from the path, when mankind decides willingly to leave this noble status and regress, he will go so low that he becomes worse than beasts who glorify the praise uh, of Allah Azza wa Jal. Again, emphasis upon emphasis upon emphasis, and then Allah Azza wa Jal deflates this and causes a shock to the one hearing or, or uh, reading the, the verse. 
The sequence of verses are making you wonder why Allah Azza wa Jal is, is giving this emphasis. Why would mankind lose this status? What is going on? But Allah Azza wa Jal does not give the answer in a direct way. This happens and then you do that. Or this, you do this and this happens. No. Allah Azza wa Jal gives it in an indirect way. Saying, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَمْنُونَ Now, this means except for those who believe and act uh, and perform righteous deeds, uh, for they will have uninterrupted, everlasting or never-ending reward. So it is as if Allah Azza wa Jal is saying, these are the only ones who are going to retain this status. You don't want to go regress to the lowest of the low? Retain the status by being amongst those. Faith and righteous deeds. You see the status, that noble status, Allah Azza wa is talking about and encouraging us, rather enjoining that we retain, is something that He willed for us. He created us to be on that status. He created us to believe and act righteously. Believe in Him. And righteous deeds and righteous actions are nothing but the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah Azza wa willed this for us. And those who willingly decide to give up this prestigious status will regress. And now another interpretation to Asfal Asafilin is the lowest part of hell. We seek refuge in Allah Azza wa from uh, reaching that. Now, after this introduction, given oaths, showing the objective of creation, showing the rank that you need to maintain yourself at and retain, and what can make you lose it, Allah Azza wa Jal asks a question, saying, فَمَا يُكَذِّبُكَ بَعْدُ الدين? So what yet causes you to deny a deen? A deen has two meanings, or can be interpreted in two ways, to have two meanings. A deen meaning religion, and a deen meaning recompense, meaning the day of accountability, the day of judgment. So Allah Azza wa Jal is asking, after knowing all of this, after knowing your objective, after knowing what is your responsibility, what makes you deny this faith? By denying it, you will regress. Or, what, make you, what makes you deny al-maw'id, al-mi'ad, recompense the day of judgment, the day of return, because this was the problem of the Quraysh. They were denying that they will be resurrected and held accountable. أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا are we going to be resurrected after we die and become dust? So Allah Azza wa Jal is asking, what makes you deny this recompense, this day of recompense? أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ Is not Allah the most just and the best of judges? Ahkam, again, is a word in Arabic that can take two meanings. Ahkam, meaning a'dal, meaning the most just. Or ahkam, meaning the most wise. And the scholars of tafsir said, whenever a word or a verse can have two different meanings, and both can be applied then we should not give one and refrain from the other one or remove the other one. So Allah Azza wa Jal 
with his wisdom he is the most wise and with his justice will give the oppressed their due rights in the hereafter will deal according to his wisdom and justice with those who retained the lofty status accordingly and those who regressed to the lowest of the law accordingly. And then uh, something yani, worth mentioning here is that uh, some scholars, both uh, early, early scholars and contemporary scholars, early scholars like Nawawi, contemporary scholars like Sheikh Uthaymeen, uh, they said that when this verse is recited, uh, it is recommended uh, by means of analogy. The Prophet ﷺ, it is reported in the book of Imam Abu Dawood and classified as authentic by Al Albani that when the Prophet ﷺ recited, Alaysa, uh, Alaysa the end of Surah Al, -Al Qiyamah, uh, he said, Subhanaka uh, Fabala. Glory be to you indeed. Is he not able to resurrect the dead? This is the end of Surah Al Qiyamah. The Prophet وسلم, said, Glory be to you indeed. So they say, uh, based on this, any verse that has a question similar to this, Alaysa Allahu bi ahkam al hakimin, is another verse, which is the verse that we're talking about here. They said, uh, one can uh, say Subhanaka Fabala. However, this is not in the uh, five daily prayers. It's either in the optional or, you know, when you're reciting uh, the Quran. With this, we conclude the, the session and uh, conclude Surah Teen. Subhanakallahu alhamdulillah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.